All right, I got another 50 and 100 yard ballistic gel test for you today in 22 Magnum. Previously, I did the Winchester Super X and the Winchester Dynapoint. Check out the 22 slash Rimfire playlist on the channel if you missed that one. And of course, anything Rimfire is going to be in that playlist as well, like gun reviews, long range shooting, ammo tests, ballistic gel tests, and whatnot. But today we're going to be comparing these three ballistic tip bullets. Um, I'll tell you right now, these two are exactly the same other than brand. Uh, they're both the 30 grain VMAX bullet. So, Horn uh, excuse me, CCI is just loading the VMAX bullet from Hornady. It does have a different collar tip, but it's still the 30 grain VMAX bullet. They're both advertised 2,200 feet per second, but I know some people may not want to believe that or may think there might be a slight difference with CCI, even though it's the same bullet at the same velocity. So I'm going to try to throw those into this video as well, but my main focus is on these two because these two are actually different. So 2,200 feet a second, 30 grain ballistic tip. The Remington is a 33 grain ballistic tip, which they call their AccuTip, and they are advertising... 2,000 feet a second so it's 200 feet per second slower advertised with only a three grain increase in weight so like I said I'm gonna make sure I get good shots with these two and then we'll fit this one in somewhere uh, after the fact just to try and throw those in the block for you guys as well so I'm using Knox 10% ballistics gelatin I make it up myself I'm always temperature controlled got it in there with some ice it's a nice cool fall day. It's in the low 40s right now, so no issues there with the temperature. This is supposed to stay at about 38 degrees for optimal performance. I got my BB calibration test there coming in at 3.25 inches, so we are within calibration. All right, I'm thinking it should be a little easier than the last one because these are a lot more accurate than the Winchesters were. So I'll start on the right side of the block. We'll shoot the Hornady VMAX first. Then in the middle, I'll do the CCI VMAX, and then on the left side, we'll do that Remington AccuTip. Oh, and I got my GoPro down there, guys, so we'll splice in that footage as well, get you real close up. All right, let's go check it out. All right. <laughs> yeah, pretty similar on those. I mean, it could just be the variance between one round and the next, but the Hornady actually penetrated further than the CCI VMAX. Again, they're both VMAX bullets though, uh, but you can see the permanent wound cavity here is practically identical. So it probably just coincidence this one held on the more lead so it penetrated another inch which reminds me I gotta get my tape measure down here get uh, penetration depth for you guys man I hope we caught that one I don't think we did nope out the side dang it that is real impressive though from that Remington AccuTip wound cavity is almost as large but look at that penetration and then we didn't capture it but we got this is perfect so you see the difference between all three cavities. So I'm going to have to take another Remington. Not worried about seeing what the cavity looks like or anything. Try to come more centralized like here to try to get a capture. That way we have a capture on each one at 50 yards before we move out to 100. I am just really blown away and impressed with those Remingtons right now. You know, these are more explosive. I mean, that is massive right there. I'll try to get a measurement on that uh, permanent cavity there from those VMAX, but that is still huge for a 22 mag and the penetration geez all right here we go with that second Remington right next to the CCI VMAX right where I wanted it You gotta be kidding me. Same thing happened, so I came over an inch further. It curved the exact same path and came out again. Watch, I'll probably place one over here and then it's gonna curve that way. <laughs> 
So I got to shoot. I'm going to shoot a couple more off camera until we get a capture. Um, but I got the tape measure down here for you guys. So Hornady VMAX. Well, this is backwards, but six inches of penetration there. And then about five for the CCI VMAX. Again, probably just the difference from one bullet to the next. They both do the same thing. So if you shot 10 of each in here, some of them are going to go five inches. Some of them are going to go six inches. Um, this 12 inches here. And so they're exiting the block at about like 13 inches there. They can't be going much further if we could actually capture one. The width of the permanent cavity, about one and three quarter inch on the Winchester, sorry, Remington. It's hard to measure this one because it reaches clear over into that. But like two and a half inch wide permanent cavity on that VMAX there. And then this one kind of... Ooh, it split the side here, so we got to measure clear from the side. That goes to two inches, but that one was probably two and a half inches also. Yeah, there's about two and a quarter. If there was more gel over here, that would have continued slightly. So they're both getting, like I said, five to six inches of penetration because they're both VMAX. And you're getting these absolutely massive cavities, about two and a half inches wide. But that Remington, man, is still tearing it up nasty. I need to compare those against the 40 grain since they uh, penetrate so far, but the penetration is just amazing considering they're still dumping that much energy. Be interesting to see what it does at 100 yards here. Alright, I took two more off camera there. This block is going to be shredded now. Hopefully it caught at least one of these. Okay, one, two. Captured both. Of course, those two go pretty straight. Uh, that center shot started to curve at the end. This one started to curve about halfway through here, but we got both of them this time. Flip this up, see if I can see here. So, it doesn't look like the cavity is quite as large as the uh, first one there, but I mean, that one's still pretty decent size there, about an inch and a half. And I noticed too, yeah, look how low that was. That one actually lightly touched the table. That might have been why that one curved. So, this one here touched the table. And I was wondering about this up there. I'm like, I wonder if the reason they're penetrating so far and doing so much damage is because they're yawing sideways and that could explain why they're... Whoosh. And I gotta tell you, I'm looking down in there, it doesn't look like they're expanded. So I think that's the exact reason. Yeah. That is so that hit the table. That's why that nose is like that. But they're not expanding. But they do yaw sideways, which is why they they went so far because they retained all the weight. They did not you know the other the other two that we missed would look just like this one. This one only looks the way it did cuz it hit the table. So they are not expanding, but they yaw sideways when they hit. So that's why they're doing that kind of damage. We'll see what happens at 100. Now, which by the way, again, these are 12 inch blocks. It depends how you measure it. Cause see, they got, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but they got a tapered edge. So from the here to here, it's 11, but from the bottom, it's 12. So these were going about 13, 14 inches into the block there which is not a lot of penetration um with the winchester video i just did at 100 yards because one of them didn't expand at 100 yards we got 23 inches of penetration it was clear back here the reason these are only going 13 14 without expanding is because they're they're yawing sideways so they're creating a lot of drag which is also why they create that giant wound channel there although again the ones on the bottom those last two i just took care of these captures we actually have the wound cavity not quite as large especially on this one here this one's a little better so they don't always this one looks like it was tumbling you see how it's like twisting like that whereas this one looks like it was yawing sideways because it's just got a big tear right there so 
they do seem to um i don't think you're ever going to get one not based off of those four shot in the block there at least at 50 yards i don't think you're ever going to get one that goes perfectly straight and doesn't do any damage it's going to tumble around or y'all sideways as for the v-max obviously there's not much left of those this one that went six inches instead of five has a little bit of a base left you can see the ballistic tip down in there there's what's left of that so yeah that's still got a little bit of a slug left there compared to this one the cci v max <sighs> Yeah, it's just some little... <laughs> I'm not really getting anything. It's like copper fragments. A little bit of lead, probably. That's pretty much it there on the that CCI one. Which, again, they're the same bullet. They're both VMAX bullets by Hornady. There's a chunk of lead in there that it shed from the CCI one. It's just, like I said, if you shoot 10 of these in the block, 10 of each, they're going to do the same thing. Sometimes you're going to hang on to a little more lead. Sometimes you're not. So that's going to make your penetration vary there. And I just noticed something interesting. I mean, I seen it earlier, but I forgot. That's a little ballistic tip out of the Remington there. And that's the other one from both the first two shots that we did not capture. Whereas this one retained its tip. This one hit the table. So it's kind of hard to tell. Let's see if it lost it in here somewhere. On one of these two shots. Ah, right there. Is the tip from the one that made contact with the table. But this one lost its tip and it did less damage than the ones on the top which also lost their tip. So kind of just don't know what you're gonna get with that other than it's guaranteed, based off the four shots I'm seeing here at four, uh, 50 yards, it's guaranteed to tumble y'all something and, and tear it up at least at 50 yards. But I'll get these back in the cooler Got to transport everything down to 100 yards, get it set up there, and we'll see what they both, or all three, I should say, do at the 100 yards. Also, by the way, the only reason these are shedding their tips is because they're turning sideways in the block, and then it plops them out. If they stayed straight, the tips would not come out. So that one probably stayed more straight, which is probably why it retained its tip. All right, here we are set up at 100. So fresh block other than those two I just plucked out there previously at 50 yards so that's what we're looking at and i am getting some wind drift i'm gonna have to monitor the the wind they're about dead on at 50 but i uh, had about a four or five mile an hour crosswind and it's pushing them over here inch and a half two inches to the right so um i'm probably not going to have such perfect shots down here we'll see i'm going to kind of monitor the wind all right this time i'm going to have you guys zoomed in from this camera angle and i'm also going to go hornady v max Remington AccuTip in the middle that way so since that thing's curving that way Hopefully we get a capture this time if I put a dead center in the block and then on the left side the CCI VMAX Hornady VMAX <laughs> Completely missed off to the right side due to the wind Hornady VMAX. Remington AccuTip. CCI VMAX. CCI VMAX. What in the hell? CCI VMAX. Finally. Jesus. So that right there is for anyone who didn't believe there was wind down here. It kept kicking up and dying off the whole time. So like I said, it was having some difficulty due to that wind. Whenever it would kick up, it would push my bullets off to the right. And just because you didn't see the leaves on the ground move doesn't mean we weren't having wind as you just saw there. And it's also hard to see sometimes what I'm feeling at the, at the bench while shooting. Unless I fast forward it like that, then you can really see how much everything's moving around.
Well, that kind of sucked, but <clears throat> I got one of each in the block. Two of the CCI, so yeah, there's no wind now, of course. It keeps playing games with me, so it must have been up five, six miles an hour. First shot completely missed off the right side of the block. Second shot, I aimed further left on the block. And then, of course, it died down some for that shot, so it hit almost dead center. Then the following shot with the Remington in the middle, um, <laughs> it went just about where I was aiming because uh, the wind died down for that shot. And then CCI uh, VMAX, there was no wind on that one, I guess. It went right where I shot, and then that... And then I took another one that somehow completely missed the block. I'm assuming it went too high. And then final shot um, went where I needed it to. But we'll see what we got down here. And we might have to retake some shots. But Okay. So this is the Hornady VMAX. Yes, that's correct. Hornady VMAX right there. You can already see there's a massively different outcome <laughs> and that's because it did not expand so nothing and then it started to tumble and y'all so that's why you get that damage and dis disruption right there flipped around backwards and then there she came to a rest not expanded and then this was the Remington um, well we already know that guy's not expanding and it's right there Further by one inch see if we can see the difference in the tracks here so the Remington's the one you see on the bottom there they both did about the same thing they both got the about right here three inches in roughly and then flipped around looks like the Remington carried a little more damp but again that's just a difference between one shot and the next so yeah they pretty much did the same thing where they both came in about three inches Flipped, tumbled, yawed, whatever. Flipped around backwards. And then there you go. Zero expansion from those. About uh, 13 inches penetration on the Hornady VMAX. About 14 inches of penetration on the Remington AccuTip. So then I hit here with the CCI VMAX. But that was so close to the top. I took another. But you can see what it did. Until it exited the block. Yeah, you gotta be freaking kidding me. So the second one I took here, it looks like it rose up and came out the block right there too. So we don't have a capture on that. Now this one looks like it expanded because you can see well, there's its tip. That doesn't necessarily mean anything as we learned. So that could just be from a yaw or a tumble or what have you. But the second one with those cavities much smaller, I think that one tracked straight. Um, somehow the tip came out, but you can see there the the damage, not nearly as much. So this someone definitely did something. So I'm going to have to, I think I only have one of those left, actually. I'm going to have to try to come in way lower so we can get a capture. Um, we'll take, uh, take a few more with each. I'll try to keep track of them. Of course, the bullet's pretty recognizable because they each have different colored tips. I think the tip came out of the Remington right there, but yeah, you can see it in the block. So, I mean, that's our results thus far, but I'll try to get one more of each in the block, see if maybe one of these ballistic tips is gonna expand for us. Well, as long as the GoPro is still running, we got footage of these going in. Ooh. What do we got here? Well, <laughs> all right, there's another Hornady. You can tell by the red tip. Oh, no, that's, that's the second one we got there. So that one went 14 inches. And where's our entry right there tumbled again there she is what else did I get in here doesn't look like anything <sighs> yeah are you serious 
I tried. <laughs> this is difficult. There's the other freaking CCI VMAX came out the top again. Um, but you can see it's it's still not doing a whole lot there. It looks very similar to this uh, previous one from it here. You can see a black tip, black tip, black tip. This one obviously did a lot of damage. It must have yawed real good. Or that one may have expanded, but I don't think so. Because if it expanded right there, the tip should be back here somewhere instead of up there. So I think that just went 100% sideways for a second before it flipped around backwards. So that's why we got that big cavity. Um, these ones just tumbled in a different manner, I guess, to where they didn't create as much damage. I think they're both going backwards. I think that's why they're shedding the tip when they, they go. I don't know. These tips are facing forward. It's kind of hard to tell. Anyways, that's our results, guys. So you see you're getting... It seemed like... Uh, the Hornady versions may be a little more consistent there at tumbling at uh, 100 yards. So maybe the velocity is slightly different by 20 feet per second or something. I don't know. You can get that difference just between one box and the next or one lot number and the next. So not necessarily because this one says Hornady and this one says CCI. I mean, our Remington, the one that we did capture, I don't know what the heck this was. I don't see any more here. I'm going to shut up and take a look, see if I find anything else, but, you know, we know what to expect from the Remington anyways. It didn't do nothing at 50, so it's not going to do nothing at 100 other than tumble, just like these are now doing. And yeah, I looked. I'm not finding anything else, so these are our only captures at 100 yards. I did what I could, guys. So there's your Remington. I mean, you can see them here, but we'll examine them on the table. Get uh, retained weight and whatnot. I was going to say measurements, but there's no expansion. Ah, get in there. Uh, so there's nothing really to measure except for on the VMAX at 50 yards. So, All right, here's our captures. I'll get a measurement where I can. Retained weight. So the Hornady uh, 30 grain VMAX here. That was our result at 50 yards. This is a result on the captures from 100 yards. The Remington AccuTip results at 50 yards, result at 100 yards. So, like I said, those are doing the same at 50 as 100. They're not expanding at all. I wonder if these would point blank. I don't know. I might, uh, I might set one up at the end of the video and try again closer range to see if we can get one to expand. And then the CCI VMAX. Again, guys, these are the exact same bullet. They just put a red uh, red tip in the Hornady, a black tip in this, but it is Hornady's own VMAX bullet. So it's the exact same bullet. There's what we got at 50, and for some reason, all three of them at 100 that went into the block curved out the top for us there. So unfortunately, not a capture at 100, but they would look just like this because they're the exact same bullet. However, I will say there is apparently some sort of difference because, as you can see here, the Hornady's retained the tips at 100 yards. All three of the CCI version, the tips came out, and the uh, the wound channels and the blocks did appear to be slightly different, CCI versus Hornady. However, I think I have a reason for that. These Hornady are new production. They were bought just weeks prior to filming this, whereas the CCI, um, I've had them for a few years. So um, be it age, maybe the metal changes or hardens or the plastic tip changes or hardens over time, or maybe their recipe was slightly different three years ago compared to now. I believe that's why we're seeing a slight difference there in regards to whether or not the tip comes out, which also with those CCI retaining the tip, that's probably why they had a slightly different uh, reaction down there at 100 compared to the Hornady because the CCI shed the tip so it threw off the weight balance. The Hornady retained the tip so obviously that changes its flight pattern and the gel as well. But if you were to buy both the CCI VMAX brand new today and the Hornady VMAX brand new today, um, they should be identical performance because they have the exact same bullet. Alright. Retained weight. CCI VMAX 50 yards, 3.8 grains. Obviously, it's going to be 100% weight retention there with the Remington. 32.9. Uh, this one lost its tip at 50. 32.5. Wonder if it'll weigh the tip. Nope. 
Point one. There we go. Took a second for it to register. Then at 100 yards without the tip, 32.3. Hornady V Max at 50. So that's a 19 point, a little bit of glare, 19 point. Oh, I moved it. I forgot. This thing's so sensitive if I move it. Looks like it says 19.1. And then 100 yards, no expansion, 30.1. I don't think there's any point <laughs> in measuring this little piece of copper jacket that was all that was left from the CCI impact at 50. But I will measure this guy. Remember, this doesn't always happen. Sometimes you might have a chunk of lead left like that, and other times it's just going to be a bunch of little pieces. It just depends. Every shot can be slightly different. So, on the lead part there, 0.2925, so 29 caliber. And if we count this jagged edge here, if I can get a hold of it right. Uh, about 49 cal. <laughs> so that's our results today with those guys, 50 and 100 yards. Stand by for just a minute and I'll take a close range shot with one of those Remington to see if we can get expansion at point blank. Um, if you guys wanna get yourself any of the products you see me using my videos like shooting bag there, steel target, paper targets, earmuffs I wear, even the Knox Ballistics Gelatin, uh, the caliper here, scale, much more. Links for everything I use in the description. If you want to see the original review video of this rifle here, I'll throw up a link in the description to that. It's a Rossi RS-22M. I should have said all this at the beginning. 21-inch barrel. Um, also, guys, as far as, like, the tumbling and yawing and whatnot, that could potentially be affected depending on the rate of twist of your rifle. I'll try to look this one up. I don't know it off the top of my head. I think 22 Magnum, they're all pretty much a standard twist rate, but... If you have one with a different twist rate, you might have different results. Um, when it hits, because it's spinning faster or slower, depending on the twist rate, you may or may not get that tumbling and yawing. It could be dependent on the twist rate. But I'll look up the twist weight on this guy. Man, I cannot talk today. Twist weight? Talking like a baby. Um, I'll find the twist. Jeez. <laughs> the rate of twist for you guys. I'll throw it up in the video. Uh, I believe all 22 mags are the same, like I said. But you can cross-reference with yours there to see if yours has the same twist rate and if it does then you could expect comparable results to what i got here today all right let's see if we can get anything at 12 yards here with these remington see if we can get them to expand now one two right there <laughs> now we got something what is this one right there it looks like I'll double check and all that, but uh, yeah, you see the wound cavity is there almost two inches across now. So we finally got expansion here, super close up at 12 yards. Ah. There's that one. And I'm pretty sure that's the other one down in there. So again, these are 12 inches. This is the bottom of the block, the longest part, because it's tapered edge. So that one's about 10 and a half. And then this one's about nine and a half, assuming, yeah, that's it. Ah. There's that one. Not really worried about getting an expansion on these. Trying to wrap up real quick. This is a little end of the video footage bonus, remember. 21.1 left on that guy. 21.6 left on that. And as you saw, the penetration pretty shallow there once, you know, they expand. So having a bullet that does not expand and tumbles instead, as long as it reliably tumbles every time it does something, it wobbles, it tumbles, it flips, it yaws, not necessarily a bad thing. And a lot of times it's actually better if it does that as opposed to expanding. Um, sometimes the damage is increased by tumbling or yawing instead of the bullet expanding. I've seen that a lot, especially in testing uh, pistol calibers like 389 millimeter, 40, 45. On some of those, uh, a bullet that doesn't expand at all and it yaws or tumbles instead does more damage than one that expands. Which, by the way, if you guys want to see any of that, check out my 389 4045 ballistic gel test. Uh, I got playlists for all those on the channel. Um, but yeah, there you go. 12 yards, we finally get expansion with those. Uh, then your um, penetration greatly reduced. 
And if you didn't notice, the uh, permanent wound cavity on those, while it did get much more penetration still with it expanded at 12 yards, again, at 50, they're not expanding. Um, the permanent wound cavity from those uh, Hornady's and CCI with the VMAX bullet, uh, much larger permanent wound cavity there, but the penetration was very shallow because of that because bullets basically fragmented. Anyways, guys, check out 22 slash rimfire playlist on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Also want to give a big shout out to my buddy John at Boomstick Revenge for letting me film on the range today.